Hello Starlets, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. We're bringing a little bit of glamour to everyday life. If you want to join my Starlet squad, be sure you hit that subscribe button. If you actually want to see how I got this cute little top knot bun here, I will link the video here if it's already up. If not, subscribe because it will be up soon. If you've been following along with my channel, you know I've kind of been on a fitness journey for a little while and I really wanted to do more like fitness and health and diet and stuff like that updates and videos so I've been doing a few more of those and today I wanted to talk to you about workout motivation Urgh. I want us to get motivated to work out and get healthy whatever that means to you whatever you know exercise or workout or health or fitness motivation whatever that means to you I want to get you motivated to do it so if you want to see my workout tips and how I get myself motivated and psyched up and try to make working out a little bit easier for me than just keep watching. All right, my first tip is the one that I am the most excited about. It's been a game changer for me. This tip was inspired by the Khloe Kardashian Fitness closet. If you've seen her closet, it is total closet goals. Like if I could have a whole closet dedicated to fitness and workout wear, if I could just have a closet like that just for my clothes, I'd be happy. Now, for most of us, <laughs> we can't have that. So I took inspiration from that and I did a poor man's Khloe Kardashian fitness closet. What I did was, and I'm sure that all of you could figure out a way to do this, I took a draw in my bureau. It's just one draw in my room and I completely cleaned it out, put everything that was in it somewhere else, and I have that draw completely and totally dedicated to my workout clothes. Obviously, I don't have as much as Chloe does to fill a closet, but mine is just all in one place. And when I say all in one place, I mean everything is in one place. I mean my underwear, I mean my sports bras, I mean my socks, uh, you know, pants, shirts, everything. The only thing I don't put in the drawer is sneakers because you don't really want to put like sweaty workout sneakers or shoes or anything like in a drawer like that. You want to let them air out. But everything else literally goes in that one drawer. That way, when I want to work out and I want to get dressed to work out, everything is all there. Now, yes, I do also go one step further and I do pull out my workout clothes for the next morning because I work out in the morning because that's what works for me. I do try to have that stuff like literally all laid out in a pile. And when I say all laid out in a pile, I mean, I mean everything. I mean underwear, socks, everything is all in one place. Just having everything in that one draw makes it that much easier to even pull your clothes out at night and get them ready the next day. It's just been a complete game changer for me because so many times I'm like digging through, I'm like, oh, I can't find my sports bra. Oh, where are my socks? Oh, I have to go over here. And I know that makes me sound incredibly lazy, but I'm about to kick my butt in a workout and guess what? I don't want to kick my butt getting ready for the workout. So I'm telling you, give this a try, clear out a draw, put all of your workout stuff in one place. You will thank me for it. I guarantee you it will take away one more excuse that you have to work out. Take a weekend, clean it out, do a little bit of organizing. It will make your life so much better. Tip number two for workout motivation is actually along the same lines. It's about workout clothes. We all feel better when we feel like we look good. So you know what? Your workout clothes should make you feel like you look good. If you go to the gym wearing something that makes you feel great, your workout's gonna be better because you know there's mirrors everywhere and you wanna check out your form and you're looking at yourself and you're like, why did I wear these pants today? They make me look awful. Go and get some workout pants that make you feel good. Whatever that means to you, whether it be something skin tight or whether it be something that is not quite so fitted because it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable, just don't wear something just old and ratty and gross. Wear something cute. And you know what? If you've been wearing the same workout clothes over and over again and you kind of feel like you're in a rut, get something new. Get a new pair of you know workout pants or get a new top or something. Or you know what? Change out your sneakers because your sneakers don't last forever. Mine actually just fell apart this morning. I've had them since actually before I was a wife. I've had them for so long. I think I hadn't even met my husband when I bought them. And they just fell apart today. You really should be changing your sneakers more often, but that's beside the point. I know what you're thinking. You're like, I'm spending all this money on a gym or, you know, I don't have the money to spend on workout clothes. Workout clothes do not have to be expensive in order to be cute and make you feel good. I will tell you, I got my workout pants that I wear every day, which I really need new ones because they're kind of getting stretched out because I've had them for a while. But I got mine from Kohl's. I got them on sale. They were super inexpensive and I get so many compliments on them. I can't even tell you. So, you know, honestly, most of my workout tops, like t-shirts and stuff, I get from Old Navy. Just find something that makes you feel good and will make you feel motivated to put it on and go work out. 
Tip number three, you have to reward yourself. And that is not <laughs> with food. Believe me, nobody likes a food reward more than me, okay? Nobody likes to say, I've had a rough week, I've really held it together, I'm doing good, I need to give myself some french fries. But don't. You need to learn to not reward yourself with food. Now, that could be, maybe for example, say you drop five pounds and you decide to splurge on like the really expensive pair of workout leggings that you've wanted for a long time. Or, you know what, say you've started running and you've just managed to run your first mile. Maybe, you want to upgrade and treat yourself to a new pair of running shoes. I encourage your rewards, and they don't have to be fitness related, but just try to make them non-food related. Maybe it's for each five pounds you lose, you stop by Forever 21 and you get yourself a new pair of earrings. Just something small, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on anything. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I lost five pounds, I'm gonna go buy myself a diamond bracelet. If you can do that, by all means, go ahead, because I know I lose a lot of weight. <laughs> if that was what I could do, but I can't do that. And I'm gonna guess that most people can't, so. So just make sure you reward yourself for doing things that are beneficial to you and that are making your life better, because you know what? Working out is hard, eating right is hard. You gotta treat yourself. Just make sure that you treat yourself with something that's also gonna be motivating and that's gonna make you better and not set you back. My next motivational tip, and I don't remember what number we're on, but we're just gonna go with it. Treat yourself with a new workout. Now, if you've been doing the same workout over and over again, whatever that workout may be, whether you go to the gym or you work out at home or something, your muscles are gonna get tired of it and probably your brain is gonna get tired of it, maybe even quicker than your muscles are. So you know what? If one day you wake up and you're like, I just do not wanna do this workout anymore, do something different. Try a new machine at the gym, or maybe you don't wanna walk on the treadmill today. Maybe you wanna like go for a walk. That could be a treat if you wanna go someplace that you really enjoy, or you know, go to a park and go for a walk or something. Or maybe it means, you know, getting a new workout DVD. I don't know, do kids still use DVDs? I still use DVDs, but I'm old. So I don't know if people still do. Most people probably stream their workouts. I don't know, but if you have like a streaming network or something that streams workouts, or you do your workouts on YouTube or something like that, because there are a lot of great workouts on YouTube, look for something else, try something different. Yoga with Adrienne's great. I do know some days I wake up, I'm like, you know what, I am still so sore from yesterday's workout, I wanna do yoga. And you can even do an intense yoga workout. Yoga with Adrienne has some great ones. I really love her yoga videos. You know, or just try something different. As long as you're actually moving and getting up and getting some kind of exercise, sometimes your body just feels like, you know what, it needs it. I mean, there's times when I've gone to do my regular workout and I've just been like, my body's like, nope, not happening today. You're not doing it. No matter how much I go to put that DVD in because again, I'm old and I still watch workout DVDs. No matter how much I want to do it, my body's like, nope, you're not doing it. It's not happening. So you know what? I don't. I do something else. I put in a different workout or I go for a walk or I try something new. Some days I just take a break, which leads me to my next tip. I don't remember what number I'm on, but it's my next tip. You need a rest day. One to two rest days a week, preferably not back to back, but if they have to be back to back, it's what it is. But your body needs to rest, your body needs to recover. When you get to be a certain age, like me, because <laughs> like I said, I'm old. When you get to be a certain age, I feel like personally, I don't like my rest days to be do nothing days. You may decide that for your body, you need to just like do nothing, to just not work out. For me, I find if I have a rest day where I just do nothing but like lounge around all day, it's that much harder for me to then jump into my next workout and I'll get lazy and it'll become a habit. And I also feel like my muscles just get too stiff. So for me, I like to have kind of what I call like an active recovery day, which means I will typically do a yoga with Adrian. I will not do power yoga. I will not do anything intense, but I actually have a few videos of hers that I really like. There's one that's like a half hour that's like just for back pain. And I don't always have back pain, but I like the video because I just feel like it gives my back a really great stretch. And when I'm done with it, I feel like it's taken up the space in my day that normally like every other day is my workout time. So it's not really affecting my day at all. It's just like, that's the time I normally would work out, but I'm just gonna do a nice long stretch. I'll use a foam roller, or maybe I'll just go for a, like a low impact walk. I like to do something that still like kind of holds that space in the morning when it's like my workout time. And I feel like I'm moving my body. I feel like I'm kind of like loosening up for the day, but I'm not doing anything intense. I'm not adding a lot of weight. I'm not usually even sweating all that much. It's just 
my way of like keeping my body moving and keeping me going and keeping me motivated. So I highly recommend that if that's something that you've tried. If you find that like taking a rest day makes your muscles really sore, try taking your rest day but having it be like a stretch day instead of a completely rest, do nothing kind of day. And that's something you can kind of do at home or you can do anywhere. You don't have to like get all ready to go to the gym or something like that. You could even just do it in your PJs. Give your body what it needs. Your body will tell you what it needs. Your body will tell you what feels right. Just listen to it. But I know for me, like when I get towards the end of the week and I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted. I'm like, I don't want to do another workout. I just keep telling myself, I'm like, Sunday is yoga day. Sunday, I get to stretch. Sunday, I get like essentially a massage in my home with just me. That sounds kind of weird, I don't know. But like that to me is something that like I look forward to all week because I really enjoy that nice long yoga stretch. And that kind of like motivates me during the week to be like, yep, I'm doing this for my rest day. I'm doing this for, and some mornings, that's the only reason I get up is like, I'm doing this for my rest day. Helps me out, maybe it'll help you. And my last tip is just to have a goal in mind. Now, I don't want to encourage you to set unrealistic goals. I don't want you to like post a picture of like Gigi Hadid up on like your wall or something and be like, yeah, I'm going to look like that in three weeks. No. Unless you already almost look like her, in which case, why are you watching this video? You're obviously fine. For most of us, that's not realistic. I feel like we already put enough pressure on ourselves to have these unrealistic goals. I'm not encouraging that you do that. I'm just encouraging you to have a goal in mind. Like right now, I'm kind of almost at the point where I can do non-girl push-ups. Like I'm close. I can do like push-ups on my toes. They're just really, they're not good. Like they're not good push-ups. But like I couldn't even, I wasn't even thinking about doing that not too long ago. And now I'm like, oh, I can do like a really crappy push-up on my toes. So maybe I'll work my way up to that. I'd like to work my way up to doing a pull-up. I don't know if that's gonna happen because I have really weak baby hands and there's a lot of me to pull up. So I don't know, I don't know if that'll happen, but I mean goals like that. Fitness goals, things you want to achieve. If, you know, you want to run, maybe you have a goal of, you know, you're running and you're walking for a little while and you want to say like, I want to work my way up to like running a full mile. Like, I feel like having a goal like that in mind or like, you know, even if it's just, I want a better butt, like not, I don't want this person's butt, but I want the best butt I can have. Not the best butt I can have, but the best butt you can have. <laughs> you know what? Maybe even do that. I mean, I feel like we probably have enough goals in our physical appearance as it is that yes, those can be motivating. I encourage you to not only think of those as goals, think of other goals like, again, maybe you want to do a full push-up. Maybe your goal is like, I want to do a full sit-up. Maybe you can't do a full sit-up. I know for years, I could never do a full sit-up. I know for a lot of years, I couldn't run. Like I was always that kid in school, like in gym class. I would be the kid who was like the last person back that like they'd run laps and I'd be the last kid back and I would literally be like wheezing in pain. A teacher would just be like already like putting kids in like the field for soccer and stuff in gym class and I'd be like, um, guys, I think I'm dying here. What are you doing? Like, believe me, I could never do that kind of stuff. I was not physically fit when I was younger. So the first time that I actually went and like tried to run as an adult, I was just like, oh my God, I can do this. I was running. I was like, I can do this. I can't believe it. This is crazy. It is so fulfilling. Now, am I ever going to be a runner? No. Am I ever going to run even a 5k? Probably not. But you know what? The fact that I even went out and did that is a huge achievement for me. And the fact that I, I'm even active at all now, seeing as though I was so out of shape when I was younger, I just feel like that in itself for me is a motivating goal. So think outside the box when it comes to your goals and try to make goals that are actually like achievable and things that you can actually work toward maybe like fitness wise as opposed to just appearance wise. I think it's just a much healthier way to live and I think it'll be more motivating in the long run. So those are my workout motivation tips. I really hope that some of these all of them or some of them inspired you to like get up off the couch or maybe even watch this video while you hop on the treadmill or something like that. Like I just want to encourage you guys to just whatever it is, whatever 
fitness and health and working out means to you. I just want to motivate you to actually like kind of get up and do it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any workout, fitness, health, anything videos that you want to see, please leave them in the comment section below. I really want to do more videos like this and hopefully when I feel a little bit more comfortable with my progress, give you guys a little bit more full body progress. Hopefully it's coming. It'll come. But if there's anything that you guys want to see, videos, tips, advice, questions you want answered, anything, please leave them in the comment section below. I love to hear from you. I love your suggestions. A while back, I was suffering from anxiety and depression, and I truly believe that beauty and health and fitness and everything saved my life, and I believe it can save yours too. So if you want to join my Starlet Squad, be sure you hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on all my social media channels. The links will all be in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time.